As we look up at the night sky with our eyes and our telescopes, we can see seven other planets, we see millions of stars, in addition to those stars, we see galaxies, millions of galaxies, and each galaxy contains over 100 million stars. The universe is a very big place. And as we look, as we look at all of this, people wonder, is Earth the only place that has life? Are we alone? Is it just us? This is one of the questions that's prompted people to look at space and decide to build spacecraft and to travel to explore our solar system. And one of those places we're going to is Mars. We're going to Mars to see if it's the kind of place where life maybe existed in the past. Now, before we start going to look at other places, and looking for life, it would be good to know what the requirements are for life so that we know that we're looking in the right spots. Life on Earth requires three basic things. The right chemicals, which we find pretty much everywhere in the universe. It also requires some kind of energy source, and it needs some liquid. Life on Earth, that liquid is water. Everywhere on Earth that we find water, even the tiniest bit, we find life. And that's really the key to our search for looking for life elsewhere, is looking for water. So we go to Mars, and from orbit around Mars, we see images like this beautiful riverbed with a channel coming in and erosion on the riverbanks. We look deep down into the rivers, and we see scour marks from floodwaters and streamlines around islands where the erosion has happened. We see impact craters on the surface where the object from space did not hit a hard, rocky surface, but it hit something hard and soft, and it flowed like it splatted in mud. So we've got a lot of evidence that long ago, 3.5 billion years ago, there was liquid water on Mars. And that's prompted us to build spacecraft, to go down to the surface and to see what it's like. Like the Curiosity rover that landed in August of 2012. She's been on the surface exploring and looking to see what kind of requirements are, are what of the requirements for life are present. Now, this is the biggest and most scientifically sophisticated rover that we've sent. She's about so big. As you can see from the Mars family rover portrait here, she's the largest one. <laughs> the Curiosity rover is located about five degrees south of the equator in the Martian tropics, exploring an area that's not been explored before. Now, to give you an idea of how long it takes and the difficulty to get from Earth to Mars with a spacecraft, if we take the Earth and shrink it down 10 billion times, it becomes the size of a candy sprinkle. We shrink Mars down 10 billion times, and it becomes the size of a poppy seed. And we shrink the distance between Earth and Mars also 10 billion times, and it becomes this far apart. So our spacecraft left the planet Earth, that little candy sprinkle, traveled for eight months to get over to this tiny poppy seed. And it made it, going 22,500 miles per hour. It went 350 million miles on this journey. And we got there and landed exactly where we wanted to in Gale Crater. Gale Crater's 95 miles across in diameter, and it's got an 18,000-foot-high mountain in the middle. It was no accident we went to Gale Crater. We chose to go here for a couple of interesting geological features that we see. This image is not Mars. <laughs> this is the North Dakota Badlands, if you've never been there. But I show you this image. What you see is an exposed rock face of sedimentary rock. And that exposed rock face is built up over time with new layers being piled on top of other layers. 
And this exposed rock face gives us like a geological clock. And we can go back in time and see what the Earth was like if we look at those deepest, lowest layers. So now we go to Mars, and we see a very similar thing there. This is an exposed rock face on the side of that mountain in the middle. And that little white box, inside there, you'll see a tiny dot. That's a boulder sitting on the hillside. That boulder's about the same size as our rover. And that rover is driving around, exploring the geological past of Mars. Well, this wasn't the only reason that we went to Mount Sharp. If you look at this image, in the upper left corner, you're going to see a river channel, a dried riverbed flowing into Gale Crater. And you can even see the debris that was washed downstream when there was water long ago. So Gale Crater is at a place that had water flowing into it. And we have the opportunity to see the geological past when there was water at this place. So the spacecraft has been on the ground for about one year, and she's made some amazing discoveries. One of them is this particular rock. Now, what might look like a piece of concrete that's been jackhammered up off the sidewalk during some road construction, this is actually a piece of a conglomerate rock. And conglomerate rocks are made when you have wind or water cementing together other rocks. This one, we know, from the size of the pieces that make it up, had to have been cemented by water, because they're too big for them to be carried by the wind. In fact, we know it was fast-moving water because they were so large. This rock was in the bottom of a riverbed. One of the other discoveries that the Curiosity rover has made is that she has discovered a dried lake bed. Other rovers that have been exploring Mars have discovered water in the past, but that place was wet intermittently, and it was wet with something more acidic, like battery acid. This place on Mars, this dried lake bed, was wet for a long period of time, and it was wet with fresh water, the kind of place where we think life would thrive. We've been looking, and we haven't seen any signs of past life, but we will keep looking with our instruments. The Curiosity rover is equipped with a scoop that she can scoop up the sand and the soil from the ground. There's also a drill on board, and she can drill into rocks and take those drill tailings and put them into the instruments on board. One of them is a complex chemistry lab that's going to be looking for preserved organic molecules and other evidence of past life, if there is any there. We're keeping on looking to see what Mars was like and what we can find. Today, Mars is a very dry place. But 3.5 billion years ago, it could have looked like this, our familiar planet Earth a place where all the requirements for life came together, and life is abundant. But does this have to be the only place? As Carl Sagan said, if it's, the universe is a pretty big place. If it's just us, seems like an awful waste of space. <laughs> Thank you.